This story begins with Mio, a beautiful 19-year-old girl who has never been happy. At such a young age, all of her dreams and happiness have gone away. She doesn't even have a single shoulder where she can cry. She is the only one who is used to crying under the cherry trees. But everything changed when she met someone who was cold and cruel. Mio is not worth more than a helper in her so-called family. Kaya, her sister, recently threw a green tea in her face because she considers it tasteless. Also, she's embarrassed that she has such a stepsister. In fact, she thinks of herself as a stain on their family's good name. Mio has no choice but to say she's sorry and do her job of making green tea again. Her father is also here, but he hasn't been a good father for a long time. Even his father feels embarrassed when Kaya tries to connect him with her. Later, Mr. Tatsuishi came here to ask for Shinish's daughter's hand in marriage for his son. Maids also know they don't care about Mio, so they know Shinishi will give him Kaya. Mio knows everything about it because she hears them talking while she works in the yard. Just then, Kuji walks in. He is glad to see her and wants to spend the rest of his life with her. He gives her some milk candy, which makes Mio smile. And Kuji is happy because he always wants to see her smile. He has also chosen to bring her more candy. Kaya wants another kimono for school when Mio keeps the things at night. Her father doesn't mind because he thinks of her as his only daughter. Mio's father tells her to stay until tomorrow when she is about to leave. She is shocked to hear that she isn't worth more than a helper. If she isn't worth more, why is she called? She has moved to sleep in spite of all the thoughts. Later, when her face is smudged by accident, Mio helps the workers clean the pots. Kaya finds her mother when she gets there and teases her about how ugly she looks with this spot. She always apologizes to Kaya even though she knows it's not her fault. She finally meets Kuji, the person they were waiting for after some time. He gives her sweets and looks sad when he sees Mio. He goes inside without saying anything else, and a few minutes later, she is called. Mio doesn't think anything good will happen because she has never heard anything good. So, how can she think that they will bring her good news? She knows that no matter what happens, her father will never let her date Kuji. So, she is ready for bad news, which will tell her what her future holds. When Kaya gets inside, she sits down with Kuji, and her father tells them that they are going to get married. This doesn't surprise Mio because she never thought anything like this would happen. But she is in for another shock when her father tells everyone that she will marry Kiyoka, and he will ask her to leave his house in the morning because they can no longer handle her. Even her sister teases her, and she wants to see how long Mio can stand this guy. Mio's heart is breaking, but she doesn't have the courage to say how she feels. Also, she is trying to get her to give up all hope and accept her grief. Her father told her not to make him look bad by going to see Kudo's family. Only she accepts their reasons and moves on. Kuji blames himself for her illness and looks pitiful when he looks at her. She has taken a break from this amazing view to catch her breath. They are making plans for Kaya and Kuji to get married after she goes. Later, Kuji looks at Mio in the rain, who also looks like she belongs there. Kuji wants to marry her, but his father calls her and asks him to marry Kaya instead. He hits his hand on the table in anger because he doesn't care about Kaya. But his father argues with him to change his mind. His father shows him another way he can save Mio by getting married to Kaya. If he marries her, then Mio and Kyoka are already set to be married. When he heard this, he had no choice but to agree. She is sad as she sits with the cherry flower tree because they are going to be apart. She has spent a lot of time with this tree, but her stepmother cut it down because he doesn't want her to be happy. She needs to leave this house now. Kuji gets closer to her, he's here to say sorry. But she hasn't been angry with him because she keeps her feelings in check. And she is happy that they are getting married. On the other hand, Kuji competes because he wants to spend his whole life with her but can't. And he is about to tell her how he feels when Kaya shows up. She asks them what's on their minds. When Kuji realizes what's going on, he doesn't say anything, and Mio is grateful to him for being kind. At night, a maid comes to her room with a kimono that her father sent. He wants her to leave in this dress, but she can't go there by herself. So, she has put little things in her bags. All of her things that were from her mother have been thrown away for a long time. She is glad that they haven't thrown her yet. Her maid tells her at that moment that Kyoka is mean by nature. Because of this, many of his fiancé has left him, so she needs to be more careful. Also, she gives her maps that will help her get to the right place. In the morning, she wore her shoes to get where she was going. They have taken away her memories and homes, which has broken her. Mio can remember when she was a child, and she played with her beautiful mother. Her mother is very beautiful, but she has left her on her own in this cruel world. After her mother died, her father spent a few days in sorrow. He has loved her, too. But one day, he brought her a new mother, and she locked her in a room by herself. Kaya is nothing more than a servant when she gets there. She has been patient through everything. She also takes the bus to the house of the stranger, where she will be married. Her heart doesn't care about the new relationship because she doesn't have any hopes for it. So, when Mia was little, he tried to hold her beautiful little sister. But her grandmother won't let her get close to her and scolds her when she tries. She also cut down the valuable tree because it reminded her of her mother. She has reached the forest because his house is in the middle of the woods and she has been thinking about them. When I got to the house, Yuri, the maid, opened the door when she rang the bell. Yuri is an older woman who makes her feel welcome when she says her name. She is also waiting for her and knows a lot about her already. Mio also greets her and leads her to the room where Kiyaka is learning. 
He doesn't bother to look at her when she gets to his room. Mio bows to him while he keeps writing on the paper. Kyoka is wondering how long she will stay in this pose, and she is still in it. When she hears this, she sits up straight and looks at him. He is as beautiful as God. She was taken in by his beauty for a moment. 